We're continuing the modeling of the Gerbera flower. In this lesson, we will add leaves to the plant. So Plant Factory has several different leaf types and we will look at each one of them to decide which one will suit us best. Before we decide which method we will use for the creation of the leaves in our plant, we should first have our texture ready. Certain types of leaf shapes are only possible with alpha maps and not with real 3D geometry, so depending on the leaf shape, this will already rule out one method or another. In our case, we have a leaf with several small and intricate details and, most importantly, the leaf shape is asymmetrical. If you want to model leaves with real 3D geometry natively in Plant Factory, the leaf shape must be symmetrical. This is not the case with our leaf, which means that we will have to use textures with alpha maps instead of real geometry. So let's get back to Plant Factory and check out the first method for leaf creation. On the first tab of an advanced segment node, there's a group of settings called blades. By activating this group, we just added a plane to our cylinder. This plane can be used to model leaves with 3D geometry and it has all the advantages of the advanced segment node, which means we can influence the shape by editing the spline, and we can also add forces such as biases to make the leaf curl or swirl or bend into any specific direction. By setting the radius of the segment to zero, we can remove the cylinder and just keep the plane. So the disadvantage of blades is the high polygon count, which we can see right here when we turn on the wireframe. Blades are quite resource heavy and they take longer to compute. And this makes them suitable for smaller plants such as grass and flowers, but not so much for trees with hundreds of individual leaves. And as we must use alpha maps for our Gerbera leaves anyways, using blades with so many polygons would just be a waste of resources and polygons. So we're not going to choose that method. The second option is the warp board node. The warp board creates a procedurally curved plane and this one was used for the old solid growth plants in view. And the plane is really lightweight and easy to control with the curl and flexibility and randomness settings. But the parabolic curved shape is not suitable for every plant and we don't have that much control over other aspects of the leaf such as its resolution. Still, it's a possible option for working with alpha maps and textures. The third and final option is the leaf node. So we already explored the node in the introductory sessions on painting plants with components. There the node worked in billboard mode, which was activated by the dynamic facing camera option. So we can give this one a try, let's zoom in. And when I rotate the camera, the leaf follows accordingly. So it now acts as a billboard that always faces the camera. There are also a couple of other options for making it face into another fixed direction. And let's go back to fixed user defined. And then we have access to the other modes of that node. The leaf node can also create two cross planes or even three cross planes which can be used for real-time plans for game engines or alternatively when we go back to this option we can have a diamond shaped plane which can be useful for certain alpha map texture shapes. In any case the leaf node in its single plane mode produces a plane that offers less control than a blade, but more than a warp board, including the resolution. Yet the plane is still very lightweight and fast to compute, so that's what we'll be using for our flower. So here we're back in our flower scene from the last video. Let's add a leaf node and connect it to the main stalk. So 
So on the transform tab, we need to increase the size of the plane that we just created to 10 centimeters. And reset the other sizes to one. And let's also add some variation of 0.1 to the width and length along X and Y. Next, let's edit the leaf material that was just added to the scene. And just like we did it before for the stalk, we need to switch this to a PBR material and then add one texture map after the other by setting the mode to map picture and then loading the correct image into each slot. So again, Plan Factory also detected the built-in alpha map in the image file, so we can click yes and TPF will set up the alpha map automatically for us. So let's go to the other slots again for metalness. We can use the same black picture that we used before for the stock. And I loaded the wrong one in here, so let's do that again. And we also need to add the normal map. Okay, so we can close the material editor now. And we see the leaves that we just added to our plant. Next, we need to set the hooking point by clicking on the leaf icon on the left of our material preview. So the hooking point is the position from where the plane will be attached to other geometry. So we need to align the point with the beginning of our leaf. Let's click OK. And now let's turn on the wireframe and look at the polygon resolution of the plane that we just created. So it's a little hard to see, but up here we can see that we only have two polygons which are divided with a diagonal line so we have two triangles and this is not enough detail for further shape modifications so let's increase the subdivision boost along the width and length to three each and now we have a lot more polygons to work with and now we can use the curvature along width and length to deform the plane into a more realistic shape. So let's give this a try. I think something like this and let's curl it a little down. Plus minus three, plus minus five degrees. And we can also edit the midrib angle and add some more detail in here, which is a setting that would not have been available with a warp board. Okay, so we can turn off the wireframe again and let's zoom onto our entire plant. Now let's go to the leaf tab on the stock node and increase the number of leaves just for a small test, something like 20 for example. Okay because we have not talked about the green curves yet. So in contrast to the orange curves, which influence the strength of a setting along the height of the geometry, the green curves influence the strength along the position of a child along its parent. So in this case of the leaves along the stalk. So let's go back to the leaf node to demonstrate this. So here on the global scaling group, I'm going to edit the green curve and let's move the curve down a bit. And we can now see that all of the leaves get smaller and smaller the higher up they are on the stalk. So we'll be using this green curve in just a minute. So for the moment let's cancel the curve change and go back to the leaf tab on the stalk node and set the number of leaves to a more reasonable value such as 2 plus minus one. I also want to limit the growth of all the leaves to the bottom 30% of our stock. 
and let's also add more leaves at the same height by activating the Horal setting and let's use a number of 2.5 plus minus 0.5 and so the soft insert setting determines how TPF is going to treat that fractional number of 0.5 so the default setting is that TPF is going to round that fractional part up or down so either we will have two leaves or three leaves around the circumference of our stock. And to add some randomness between the different types of leaves we'll use the coil setting. This setting will rotate each individual horal instance similar to a spiral staircase around the stock. Let's create a new variation to see whether we can have more leaves down here, for example this one, and now you can see the effect of the coil setting. I think I'll use 0 plus minus 90 and this should be sufficient. And we also need a slightly steeper growth angle, probably something around 45 degree plus minus 10%. So a nice feature in Plant Factory is the ability to connect several nodes to the same child slot. We want to add a leaf to the same place where the branching stalks grow from. So let's connect the leaf node to the branching stalk child slot. Oops, that was the stock transition. Let's undo this. Okay, so that's correct. Now we also have one leaf growing out from the place where a branching stalk grows out from. But this creates a problem for using the green curve that I mentioned earlier. I would like to make the leaf smaller the higher they are up on the stalk. But since we now have two different parts of geometry growing out of the same place, TPF cannot know that we only want to make the leaf smaller and not the branching stalks. So we cannot use the curves anymore on this child tab, or rather on, on this one, or it would also influence the scale of the branching stalks. And at the same time, we also cannot use the green curve on this tab anymore, as the leaf is now theoretically part of both the main stalk and the branching stalk, because it grows at the same place as the branching stalk. So we can solve this problem by rebuilding that green curve with a few extra nodes and telling Plant Factory specifically that the filter curve is meant to be controlled by the main stock only and not by the branching stock. So let's do a right click and go to the miscellaneous category and choose the parent parameters node. So inside this node we can choose the main stock as our parent and we would like to control the size of the leaves based on the position on this parent. Okay, so next let's add a filter node by going to the filter category and choosing filter. And let's connect this to our parent parameters node. So let's edit the filter. So the position along the stalk is expressed as the horizontal x-axis within a range from 0 to 1 where 0 corresponds to the very bottom of the stalk and 1 to the very top. So our x minimum is 0 and our max is 1. And the y-axis, which represents the scale that we're going to control, is also between 100% and 0%. So our minimum is 0 and our maximum is 1. So now let's mirror the curve and move that a little more upwards. And this will make the leaves get smaller and smaller and smaller the higher up they are on the stalk. We're not seeing anything right now because we haven't connected this yet to our main node. And we'll do that in just a moment. So let's close this with OK. So let's take a look again at our leaf node and we can see that we set the global scale to 10. However, our filter now works within a range from 0 to 1 because it's easier to handle the curve that way. But we need to transform the scale from 0 to 1 to 0 to 10. 
We could do that right here inside the filter, but this can become confusing quite quickly. So let's do that with a separate node. Let's add another filter node. This time we'll be using a map filter. And our minimum scale is zero. Our maximum scale is one that we are receiving from the filter. And we want to turn this into a maximum scale of 10. And now we just need to connect the result of these three nodes to our global leaf scale. So let's unfold the leaf node by clicking the plus icon. And down here on the transform group tab, we will find the global scale, which we will now replace with the chain of nodes that we just created. And when we look at the scale setting of our node, it also says that it is connected and thus replaced by something else, by something externally. So let's take a look again at our leaves and we can now see that the leaves get smaller and smaller the higher up they are on the stalk. We can create a few more variations to check this. And it works just the way that we intended it to work. So this concludes the creation of the leaves. And in the next lesson, we will finish the modeling and add blossoms to our flower.